With over a thousand monsters to choose from in D&D, it can be hard to know which ones to use, and even harder to know how to play them. What weapons do they favor? What tactics would they use? How do they interact with other types of monsters? These are all questions that can come up to DMs that are looking to make their combats more enticing for their players. It's certainly one that I struggled with. That's why I'm back today with another monster breakdown for D&D. Hello again everyone, I'm Bill from Alt-Roll, and today I'm going to dive into a brief history of a D&D creature, how that history was adapted into 5th edition, and how this lore can help game masters make their combat encounters better. So, whether you're here for the cool lore breakdown or for the combat tactics, I'm hoping to give you a lot more to chew on when it comes to the monsters we face in D&D. For episode 17, let's look at the monstrous shepherd of spiders, the Ettercap. An original creation for Dungeons & Dragons, the Ettercap was introduced in the first edition Fiend Folio in 1981. Described as ugly bipedal creatures that get along well with all types of giant spiders, Ettercaps are spider-like creatures that are exceedingly cruel and cunning despite their low intelligence. Heavily associated with arachnids, it's believed that the name Ettercap is derived from J.R.R. Tolkien's use of the word Attercop in The Hobbit, an Old English word for spider. Standing at around six feet tall, even with their hunched shoulders, Ettercaps have shorter legs and longer arms that reach all the way down to their ankles. These arms are capped with hands that have a thumb and three long fingers that end in razor-sharp claws. Their torso is home to a large pot belly and are covered in tufts of thick, wiry black hair which conceals their equally thick skin. Their heads are described as equine in shape, with blood-red reptilian eyes and large fangs protruding from their mouth. It's from this large mouth that their informal language comes from, where they express themselves through a combination of high-pitched chittering noises, shrieks, and violent actions. Choosing to live deep in the forests, often alone or in pairs, Ettercaps were neutral evil creatures, creating traps with their silk glands to surprise potential prey. Once the trap was sprung, Ettercaps would close in to poison their foe with a bite attack and then use their claws to finish the job. Once the creature is dead, the Ettercap immediately devours as much of the corpse as possible, able to consume an entire deer or large humanoid in a single sitting. It wasn't until 3rd edition that their monster type was codified as Aberration, though that would change quite a bit in the editions to follow. Despite these category changes, there weren't many significant variations or updates to the Ettercap in terms of their lore or stat block. In 4th edition, they were moved to the humanoid creature type, with notes that they were considered part of the spider family, and their alignment was changed to unaligned. In 5th edition, Ettercaps are neutral evil monstrosities. Described as humanoid spiders, they tend feed, and watch over spiders the way a shepherd oversees a flock of sheep. Despite nesting deep in the forest, ettercaps have no desire to live alongside nature. A forest infested with ettercaps becomes choked with webs and giant insects. Creatures that wander too far into such a wood are liable to become lost in a maze of webs that dangle with the bones and lost treasures of the Ettercap's victims. Primarily an ambush predator, the Ettercap uses stealth, webs, and its climb speed to maneuver through the shadows of the deep forest, stalking its prey until it walks into a trap or becomes isolated from its compatriots. As creatures that choke out the nature of the forest, Ettercaps are natural enemies of fey creatures. They use their webs to catch sprites and pixies, and will encase a dryad's tree in webbing in a vain attempt to trap the dryad. 
Fey who fall to the Ettercaps are quickly devoured, forcing some to approach outsiders for help in dealing with an Ettercap infestation. While the lore and history surrounding them might be sparse, their stat block certainly isn't. Let's pivot over to that now and take a look at how they work mechanically. Starting at the top, we have their size, creature type, and alignment. Size in 5th edition defines the space a creature takes up in combat, with a medium creature taking up a 5 foot by 5 foot square or hex on a battle map. Using the 3.5 edition Dungeon Master's Guide, shown here, Ettercaps can range between 4 to 8 feet tall and weigh between 60 and 500 pounds. Their creature type is Monstrosity. Monstrosities are monsters in the strictest sense, and serve as a catch-all category for creatures that don't really fit into any other category. Alignment broadly describes a creature's general outlook on the world, and combines their moral beliefs with their attitudes toward society and order. The alignment of the Ettercap is neutral evil, meaning they will do whatever they can get away with without compassion or qualms. Below that top bar are the rest of the Ettercap stats, which are essential for the Dungeon Master to play them in combat. The Ettercap has an armor class of 13, 8d8 plus 8 hit points, or 44 on average, and a movement and climb speed of 30 feet. Looking at their ability scores, the Ettercap has 14 strength, 15 dexterity, 13 constitution, 7 intelligence, 12 wisdom, and 8 charisma. With 10 being average for an ability score, the Ettercap has high strength, dexterity, constitution, and wisdom, and low intelligence and charisma. For their skills and proficiencies, the Ettercap has a plus 3 to perception, a plus 4 to stealth, a plus 3 to survival, has dark vision out to 60 feet, has a passive perception of 13, speaks no languages, has a proficiency bonus of plus 2, has a challenge rating of 2, and awards 450 experience points when killed. In terms of special abilities, the Ettercap has the Spider Climb, Web Sense, and Web Walker abilities. Spider Climb allows the Ettercap to climb difficult surfaces like walls and ceilings without needing to make an ability check. WebSense states that while in contact with a web, the Ettercap knows the exact location of any other creature in contact with the same web. WebWalker allows the Ettercap to ignore movement restrictions caused by webbing. In terms of offensive actions, the Ettercap has a bite attack, a claw attack, a recharging web attack, and the multi-attack feature which allows it to make one bite and one claw attack per attack action. The Ettercap variant substitutes the claw attack with a web garrote attack as well. The bite attack has a plus 4 to hit, a reach of 5 feet, and deals 1d8 plus 2 piercing and 1d8 poison damage on a hit. If hit, the target must succeed on a DC-11 Constitution saving throw, or be poisoned for one minute. The Claw Attack has a plus 4 to hit, a reach of 5 feet, and deals 2d4 plus 2 slashing damage on a hit. The Web Garrote Attack has a plus 4 to hit, a reach of 5 feet, can only target a medium or small creature the Ettercap has advantage against, deals 1d4 plus 2 bludgeoning damage on a hit, and grapples the target on a hit with an escape DC of 12. Until the grapple ends, the target cannot breathe, and the Ettercap has advantage on attack rolls against it. The web attack has a plus 4 to hit, a range of 30 feet normally and 60 feet with disadvantage, 
can target one large or smaller creature and restrains a creature with webbing. As an action, the restrained creature can make a DC 11 strength check to try to get out of the webbing, escaping on a success. The webbing can also be destroyed with an AC of 10, 5 hit points, vulnerability to fire damage, and immunity to bludgeoning, poison, and psychic damage. This ability recharges on a 5 or 6, meaning that the Ettercap can use this ability once, then at the start of subsequent turns must roll a 5 or a 6 on a d6 to be able to use this ability again. Lastly, we have their environment tags. When using digital resources, we can see that Ettercaps are commonly found in forest areas. Now that we've gone through and sorted out their stat block, we can begin to relate the Ettercaps lore and abilities to how we should be using them in combat encounters. Specifically, we're going to look at how they behave, how they would approach a combat situation, and how to get into the mind of an Ettercap if you want to fight effectively as one. How do we do this? Well, we'll need to take the lore and stat blocks of the monster and compare that with how that information is intended, referencing tactics and interpretations from The Monsters Know What They're Doing by Keith Amon. Let's start by going through Amon's key assumptions one by one and relating them to the Ettercap as we go. The first of Amon's assumptions is that most creatures want to survive, and if seriously wounded, will try to flee combat. Exceptions to this rule are fanatics or intelligent beings who believe they'll be hunted down and killed if they do flee. Seriously wounded can be subjective, but we can assume that threshold to roughly be one-third of the creature's health. With an average of 44 hit points, one-third of that would be rounded to 15. So, if an Ettercap were reduced to 15 hit points or fewer, it would attempt to flee combat. Next up, let's look at how their alignment can impact their thinking. On the scale of good to evil, good creatures tend to be friendly to others, whereas evil creatures are hostile to others. On the scale of lawful to chaotic, Lawful monsters may try to capture or non-lethally subdue others, whereas chaotic monsters would just kill them. Since Ettercaps are neutral evil, we know two things about them. First, since they're between lawful and chaotic, they have a 50-50 shot of either capturing or killing those they defeat in battle. Secondly, since they're evil creatures, they will be outwardly hostile to other creatures especially the Fae. Continuing with their mindset, let's dive into some of their mental ability scores. Ettercaps have an intelligence score of 7. With regards to intelligence scores of 7 or less, Amon states, A creature with intelligence of 7 or less operates purely from instinct. That doesn't mean it uses its features ineffectively, only that it has one preferred modus operandi and isn't going to be able to adjust if it stops working. While Ettercaps have an innate instinct to lay traps, once a trap is sprung, they're not really going to be able to adapt to other tactics on the fly. Clever adventurers who burn away webbing or avoid the traps the Ettercap sets might confuse them, causing them to either run away or to engage in an open pitched battle. Ettercaps also have a Wisdom score of 12. With regards to Wisdom scores of 12 or 13, Amon states, A creature with Wisdom of 12 or higher will choose targets carefully, and may even refrain from combat in favor of parlay if it recognizes that it's outmatched. As ambush predators, Ettercaps would have developed the ability to tell when a target might be too much to handle and are opportunistic in how they choose to attack. Against tougher parties, they may wait for a trap to be triggered, attack when they're asleep, or even refrain from attacking if they don't think that they can win the fight. Now that we've set up how they think, 
Let's look at the Ettercap's physical abilities that influence how they fight. Thinking like a Mon, we can assume the following. Creatures with high strength focus on melee combat and won't need to compensate with greater numbers. As such, they won't need to outnumber an enemy to be willing to take a fight. Creatures with high dexterity will prefer to attack with ranged weapons, and if it's intelligent, the creature may lay traps as well. Creatures with high constitution typically have a hit point advantage over their enemies, and because of that, they're less likely to hide in combat since they can soak up a couple attacks before going down. A creature with a feature that gives it an advantage or gives its enemy a disadvantage will always prefer to use that feature. To recap our earlier stat block examination, Ettercaps have high strength, dexterity, and constitution. Comparing that examination to the assumptions we put forward, we can deduce that Ettercaps are melee-focused ambush predators that use webs to spot, entangle, and kill their foes. The last major premise from Amon is that in D&D 5th edition, unless otherwise specified, any creature gets their full movement, one action, one bonus action, and one reaction, just like any player character does. Amon posits that any creature that exists within the game world will have evolved in accordance with this rule and it will seek to obtain the best possible result from the action economy of the game. This means they will combine whatever movement, actions, bonus actions, and reactions are available to them for the best possible outcome. Now, when it comes to maximizing their action economy, Ettercaps have quite a few tricks up their sleeve. Firstly, their lairs are likely to be full of spiderwebs, which Ettercaps can traverse with ease due to Webwalker. They would likely use this ability to not only move quicker than their prey, but to know exactly where webbed creatures are at any time, granting them an easy alarm for intruders who try to sneak in, and a great way to spot sneaky rogues who keep trying to hide in the middle of combat. Even if there's already webbing down to restrict movement, the Ettercap would stealthily stalk their targets before opening the fight with a web attack. This will not only restrain one character temporarily, but also gives the Ettercap advantage on attacks against that creature. Once a creature is restrained, the Ettercap will quickly close into melee to use its multi-attack, whether that is the bite and claw attacks or the bite and web garrote attacks. The bite attack will poison the creature, which makes it easier to keep creatures restrained and makes it harder for them to attack the Ettercap, as poisoned creatures have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. The web garrote attack grapples the target as part of the action and grants further advantage to the Ettercap on attack rolls against the garroted target. The web garrote does require the Ettercap to have advantage on the initial attack roll, however, so when that is not possible, it may revert back to its claw attack to still be able to get off two attacks per turn. With this initial salvo, in two turns, the Ettercap would be able to restrain a creature, make two attacks at advantage against the target, potentially poison the target with a bite attack, and potentially grapple them with a web garrote, all while doing around 14 damage on average. With how effective these actions can be, it's no wonder that the web attack is on a recharge so that dungeon masters can't abuse it to restrain the whole party to death. Overall though, with all of these assumptions laid out and applied to edder caps, what do we now know about how to use them in combat? First, Ettercaps are ambush predators, stalking their prey as they move through their trap-infested, web-strewn lair. They'll wait in the dark corners of walls or ceilings, dropping down on their targets with spider minions once the opportunity presents itself. Second, as ambush predators, Ettercaps use stealth to wait for their prey to fall into a trap or become vulnerable. While they are wise enough to not pick open fights with tough opponents, their tactics are going to be limited to ambushes and traps, 
relying on them a bit too much to carry them to victory. Third, in combat, header caps have an entire kit at their disposal once combat breaks out, opening up with control abilities before closing into melee. Once in melee, they have a variety of attacks at their disposal, each with added abilities that inflict dangerous conditions on those that they hit. Fourth, if reduced to 15 hit points or fewer, an adder cap will attempt to flee combat. Their natural climbing speed, especially when unhindered in webs, makes escaping a fight very easy for them, meaning an adder cap might also use hit and run tactics if they find themselves getting low on health. Fifth, if an adder cap wins a combat encounter, they're likely to just devour their prey as any beast would. This unfortunately means that any adventurers unlucky enough to be killed by Ettercaps won't have enough remains to be revivified, so a fight with them can be a literal life or death moment. With that, we come to the end of today's video on the Ettercap. When paired with a coterie of regular or giant spiders, the lair of an Ettercap can easily become a tomb for unprepared adventurers. With abilities that increase their movement, root enemies in place, and inflict disadvantage on top of that, an Ettercap is a great danger that knows how to play to its strengths. What I want to know is, what do you think of the Ettercap? Do you like using these spider-like monstrosities against your party? Or do their tactics make them a bit too deadly against lower level parties? You can let me know down in the comments or you can discuss it on the Outworld Discord using the link in the description. While on the server, you can view our courses that teach the basics of D&D. If you like what we do, supporting us on our Ko-fi goes a long way in helping us keep Outworld going, and make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified when our videos go live. However, that's all I had for you. Thank you all for watching, make sure to have a great rest of your day, and I'll see all of you next time.